What's up, Tech Heart Rockstars? Tonight, we're going to install Plasma 6 on Arch Linux the right way. I will disclose, I did a live earlier tonight and I messed up the grub installation part. So don't go look at that. But follow along as we install Plasma 6 and extra packages that are optional and needed to create a really great Plasma 6 installation on Arch Linux. You run Arch, right? All right, come along. Let's have a good time and install Plasma 6 right now. Bow! Let's boot into this ThinkPad and I have a Ventoy inserted with the Arch Linux installation ISO. That's it. So catch your boot menu and select pick boot device. Let me select this USB stick. The hard drive is completely wiped and that's what we'll be working with tonight. I'll boot into the newest Arch Linux ISO. I'm gonna turn off my video and I'll catch it in the terminal. Doo -doo. Okay, so first things first, we need internet access. I am not connected to ethernet. I can run an IP space A command, and you'll see that option number four is WLAN zero. That's the station that we need. I'll run a command called IWCTL, dash dash, pass phrase, and here we'll put our SSID's password. Then station, and for me it's WLAN zero, you'll have to select your Wi-Fi station ID. If you have ethernet, you don't need to enter this command and then connect and your SSID name. I'm gonna blur the screen now and change password and SSID to my names. Okay, I'll clear the screen. Now we can ping 8.8.8.8 .8 to make sure we have network access, which we do. All right. Now for this installation, the goal is to have Plasma 6 fully installed with all optional packages that the KDE team recommends and all Plasma applications that Arch Linux recommends. I'm going to use the ArchFi Arch Linux installation script and the reason that I'm going to do that is it will allow us to install a vanilla Arch Linux with many suggested packages that are good to use. In the ArchFi script, you can also install Plasma. The script lists it as Plasma 5, but since Arch Linux has updated their main repositories, it would actually install Plasma 6. However, we're not going to use the ArchFi script to install a desktop environment. We'll do that afterwards, and I'll show you how to walk through the Arch Wiki and KDE's recommendations to get the best Plasma 6 installation that you could want. All right, let's grab this ArchFi script. We're going to run curl dash capital L O archfi dot sf dot net slash archfi. Run that command and it'll pull down the script and then we can run sh archfi. Okay, we won't change the language but keyboard will go to US or you can select yours. Editor. I want Vim but you can select Nano if you don't know how to use Vim. Now we'll select disk partitions. I'm gonna do two things. First, let's do auto partitions GPT EFI. That's if you have EFI, which most of you should. This is a 10 year old ThinkPad. I'll type yes. Okay, it created three partitions. Let's look at those. Dev SDA. It gave us a one gigabyte EFI partition, an eight gigabyte Linux swap partition. If you have 32 gigabytes of RAM, it would have made a 32 gigabyte partition. And the remainder is our Linux file system. Okay, I like that. Let's quit. Now we can select back and select partitions. Our boot device is SDA1, swap device is SDA2, and our root device is SDA3. We didn't make a separate partition for home, so that's none. Okay, yes. Now let's format these. We know everything will be erased. For our boot, we'll make it FAT32. Swap will be swap. And root, we're gonna make a looks encrypted device. We'll have to type capital yes, and then give our looks encryption a password. If you don't need or want looks encryption, 
you can just wait until we're done here and I'll show you what you should have selected. Lux Encryption encrypts your entire root partition and I think it's a good thing to do. So now we're opening our Lux Encrypted volume. And now if you didn't want Lux Encryption, you could have just selected ButterFS or ext4 here, but now I'm gonna select ext4 on that Lux volume. Okay, now let's mount those. No errors, we're ready to go. Now we can install Arch Linux with Packstrap. We're gonna install the main Linux kernel, so select that, and Linux firmware. We'll keep DOS FS tools, but that's enough for me. All right, that's finished. I forgot to select parallel downloads, so I'll select that now and make it five. That'll make downloads faster. And now we can continue to configure Arch Linux. All right, host name. I'm going to make it Arch Plasma 6. Keyboard layout, we'll keep it US. For locale, I'm gonna search for EN US. There we go. It gives us the UTF-8 locale. Let's set our time. For me, it's America. Los Angeles, baby! And I'm gonna go with local time. All right, let's set a root password. Boom! And we can now generate fstab with UUID. Boom! We can generate MCPIO. All right, that's done. Now we're gonna do the bootloader. This is important. Let's select grub, install grub. Make sure you read for any errors. I don't see any. We need EFI boot manager because this is an EFI system. And now, since we have a Lux encrypted root partition, we have to add crypt device equals UUID, whatever the UUID is, to the grub file. So let's select yes here. And there it added crypt device equals dev disk by UUID, ending in 1885, and it named it root. Okay. Now let's install that bootloader to SDA, and it's an EFI. No error reported. Let's go! Now we can select back, and we're gonna move on to extras. I'm gonna select Vim. If you don't know Vim, just select Nano. And also select Network Manager. Booyah! All right, we're done there. Let's go into Arch Die. It's the full desktop install script. We are not going to install a full desktop, but we're going to use it for some extra packages. We can go into updates and you can select upgrade, but it won't find anything. And then let's clean our cache. Okay. Uh, you could install Yay. However, I prefer Peru as an AUR helper. So I'm gonna go back. If you don't know what those are, you could install Yay here or follow me installing Peru after we're booted into the system. Let's go to install. Console, generic. We'll keep all the pre-selected stuff and we'll add NeoFetch, BaseDevel, and FWUPD as a firmware upgrade software. If you don't know what that is, leave that off. All right, let's go. Add all these compression tools. And then for network tools, leave the pre-selected stuff. And do you need Nmap? Let's take speed test CLI. And that's it for me. All right. I'll take a text web browser. I'm going to choose links. And I don't need DD Rescue. Let's go to services. I will take some of these. Network Manager, OpenSSH, Crony, XDG User Durs. I don't want NumLock on. I will take an entropy generator and I'm on Intel graphics, so I'll select Intel U-code. If you're on AMD, select AMD U-code. If you're on NVIDIA, search Arch Linux NVIDIA on Google and read their wiki. I also want Samba, Blues, and that's it. Oh yeah. Okay, start network manager service at boot, yes.
start DHCP CD at boot? Yes. Start SSH server at boot for me is no. I don't want that available unless I turn it on with system D. Start crony at boot? Yes. Have GED at boot? Yeah. Bluetooth at boot? You know I got those earbuds. Now let's look at the file system. We want OS Prober in case we install any other distros on this installation. All of the presets and I want SSHFS, SysUtils, SIFSUtils, SMB client, NFS utils. This is to mount SSH uh, folders from another computer on your local network or beyond. SIFS and SMB are for Windows shares, NFS are for Linux shares, and I don't need any of this. How many times is it going to rebuild the MK init CPIO? Jeepers, creepers. Oh my god, come on! All right. Sound will install Wire Plumber. That's the modern solution. And I'll add easy effects. It helps you with microphones and earbuds and blah, blah, blah. You don't need it. By the way, it doesn't look like I added the five parallel downloads. We'll have to check that after we boot in. We certainly want that. Okay. Select back. I do not need any printer software. If you do, just go in here and leave the presets and install that and you'll have printer support. It'll ask you to turn on the system D printer at start too. Okay, we don't need any Xorg, any desktop environments or any of this. So we're done. Let's click back, go to config, let's go to bash. I'll set my editor to Vim, but again, you can set yours to Nano. I'm not going to set any aliases because I do so in my own dot bash underscore aliases file. But if you don't do that, you could select these and I'll set my PS1 to user and host name. That's what I like. I'll add it to both root and user by selecting update and pressing enter twice. I'll set firewall later. Let's add an account. User will be techhard. Okay, and let's go back and add TechHeart to sudoers. There we go. We're done with the rest. You can click back, exit, back, unmount. Back, exit, and now type reboot to boot into your vanilla Arch Linux install. Boom! Here we are, booting into vanilla Arch Linux. Let's go! We'll have to unlock our Lux encryption. If you didn't add Lux, you won't have a password there. But you should have, sucker. All right, so we are TechHeart and password one. Okay, first things first, we need to get on the network here. Since we installed Network Manager, we can run NMTUI. Let's activate a connection. Select your Wi-Fi and enter your password. You can type clear and then ping 8.8.8.8 to make sure you're on the network, which we are. Remember when I said I prefer Peru? I'll move into my downloads folder and I'll run a pacman s git. I need root. Okay. Sudo pacman s git. Now I can run a git clone https slash slash aur dot arch linux dot org slash peru dot git. I can move into that directory and type make pkg dash si. All right, Peru is now installed, so we can move out of there, remove the Peru directory, and let's run Peru. Peru is just like yay, but I prefer it. 
So what do we have here? We have a vanilla Arch Linux installation. Should we add some sauce? I think so. Let's run git clone https gitlab.com slash vandal byte slash deadsec dash grub dash theme dot git. These are grub themes and they are wicked. Let's move into deadsec grub theme and let's run sudo python3 deadsec theme dash pi dash dash install. You can go to the website that you saw the link to and see pictures of all these different grub themes, but I'm just gonna pick one. I'll do site down. They're really cool. All of them are awesome, but pick the one that you like the best. Okay, that's been installed. We'll move out of there. You could delete that dead set grub theme. It's like 300 megabits, but I'm gonna keep it because maybe I wanna change that theme later. Let's do a sudo nano on etc. default grub, and we're gonna add down here splash which will give us a splash screen clear the screen we need to run sudo grub dash mkconfig dash o slash boot slash grub oops boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg and run that command so that's a grub theme now let's fancy up our plymouth looks unlock theme what we're going to do is peru dash s plymouth dash theme dash optimus dash git. And I'll let that install. Okay, that theme is installed. So let's clear the screen. We first need to do a sudo nano. I'm gonna use vim on slash etc mkinitcpio.conf. The reason we need to edit this is on the hooks line, we need to go over here right before encrypt and add Plymouth. What this will do is it will show the Plymouth graphic before we unencrypt our looks device. So add Plymouth before encrypt and save the file. And now we can run sudo Plymouth dash set default theme dash r optimus. This will rebuild the mk init cpio files or your kernel and it will make that Plymouth screen show when we reboot our computer. This is the sauce, baby! Okay, when that's complete, we can clear the screen. What have we done so far? We've added a grub theme and a Plymouth theme. Let's give a reboot to the system and see the fruits of our work, baby! Sudo reboot now. This will boot into our arch and look at that awesome grub theme. And now to unencrypt our looks partition, look at this gangster ish we got here. All right, so that's the cool part. We've got our sauce installed and now we want to install Plasma 6, right? Well, let's log in. Let's pull up a website real quick. Google search for Arch Linux KDE. So I'm going to go to the Arch Wiki on KDE. Let's read about installation. First things first is to install the Plasma group or the Plasma Meta group. Well, what are the differences between those two? I'll show you right here. Let's run Peru s Plasma. The difference between Plasma and Plasma Meta are in the Plasma group, you can select or deselect every package that is installed. So you could remove like games or different Plasma packages that you might not want. So I'm not going to install this, but I am going to step through and show you. You can deselect all sorts of packages. I'm going to say no and I'll clear the screen. So I'm going to do a Peru s on Plasma Meta. The difference between these is you can't deselect packages. It will install the complete group of packages that Plasma 6 suggests. We do get a couple choices. I'm going to choose FFmpeg over GStreamer, and I'll leave this at the default, GNU free fonts, and I'll let that install.
I'm going to push clear. And now we're going to move on to KDE applications. As stated, I'm going to install KDE applications meta. So I install all of the suggested applications. So I'll do Peru dash S KDE dash applications dash meta. If you don't want to install everything, install KDE dash applications. I'm going to select VLC and the rest will be defaults. Let's go. Okay, are we done here? Yep, I'm going to push clear. Let's pull up that website again. And we've installed Plasma and KDE applications. So we're fully installed, but a lot of users skip over this one important point. Upstream, Upstream KDE has package and setup recommendations to get a fully featured Plasma session. Well, we should probably check that out. Let's open that site and zoom in. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and these are recommended packages to pre-install. Optional packages is the Oxygen 5 theme. Can you guys still see? Yeah, that's all right. We'll do Peru dash S Oxygen 5. Okay. Now it says do not pre-install these plasma packages. Now for non-plasma packages, let's add the likes of these. I'll clear the screen and I'll type Peru dash S blue widgets, dolphin plugins, FFmpeg thumbs, KDE I notify survey, KDE connect dash KDE, KDE graphics, thumbnailers, KDE network file sharing, KDE PIM dash icons, KIO admin, KIO extras, KIO fuse, KIO G drive, Lib app indicator dash GTK3. Phone on VLC. X Wayland video bridge. Okay, those are the non plasma packages. So let's give it an install. Some are reinstalling, but we are also adding a lot. A lot of people don't install these and they miss out. So let's clear the screen. And now we can move along to third party packages. And let's give that a go. We'll type Peru dash S I I O dash sensor dash proxy. Noto sans noto color emoji. Melit keyboard, power profiles daemon, switch root control, XDG desktop portal, X settings D, Orca, and system D core dump D. And we'll install all of those. Those were packages suggested by the KDE team, and that should give us a better installation of Plasma 6. Rock and roll! All right, we've installed Arch Linux Vanilla. We've added some sauce on top, making that ice cream better tasting. We've installed Plasma 6 and KDE applications, and we've installed the KDE team suggestions. One question that I have, did we install SDDM? 
using a display manager, SDDM. Let's check in our installation. We can do system CTL status display manager. Ooh, it could not be found. System CTL status SDDM. Oh, it's disabled. Okay, let's pull up that website again. Do we need to turn on SDDM? I think so. Let's type sudo systemctl enable sddm.service. Now let's do the same. Status display manager enabled. Yeah, so that should be good. Let's reboot and see what we get. There's our grub theme. Oh yeah, unlocking our looks in style. Oh yeah, we do have SDDM, but still the same bugs as we saw in the last video. Let's log in. We have Plasma 6 loaded up, so let's open up settings. And we'll go to SDDM. We'll select the Breeze theme. And we'll log out and make sure. That we're on the Breeze theme. Rockstar! Yay! So look at that. We installed Plasma 6. Gangster! That's motherfucking success.